welcome to Thursday Checkdown. I'm your host, Greg Kellogg. I'm joined by my co-host and my peer from Spring, Texas, <laughs> Tip Major. Tip has uh, made a very tactical mistake, and you'll understand a little bit later when we get into our interview. Tip, how are you doing tonight? I'm good, Greg. I'm, I'm curious to see what this mistake is, by the way. I'm, oh, you know it already. You just don't <laughs> realize what I'm going to say. Um, tonight, we're this whole series, the off-season series, has been about introducing, especially to new viewers, younger fantasy players, some of the movers and shakers in the industry that built the industry up. Well, the gentleman we have tonight, and JC, you can bring Imran on, Imran Parvez is the chief operating officer for a uh, for a new product that allows you to play with not only current players but historic figures. Now, I've made some recommendations to Imran about how he can improve the game, but I think my first recommendation has to be Imran. If you saw your photo that JC used. Dude, you got a man bun. You got to get a better photo. No, right no, 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 no. You no, got to no, get no, a better photo. No, no. Hey, look at this. Hey, look at this. Look at this. Man bun. Embrace the hair, wrong, Imran. Lady. No, don't let no, him. Say, don't let him. This is my go with the hair. There you I go, am, bro. He, look, he look can have this. long hair. Look at this. He can have. It's the man bun look. You can't go with it, man. No, that's like a girl's ponytail. No, no, no. I'm with it because a man who has confidence can rock the bun. No, there it is. That's what it is. That's what it is. The bun is unrockable. Uh, I'm sorry. But I was telling in the lead up that Tip made a, a strategic mistake. We're running a beta test on your software right now, and it's just an eight-team league. Now, the way Imran software works, it's, it's generations, fantasy, sports. But if you just go to your app store and, and search on generations fantasy, if you have an iOS or an Android, you can download the app and there's no charge. Set up your account. Do it now and practice with it. Play with it. You can play in the off season. Uh, we'll get into the, the engine behind it and how it works and things like that a little bit later. Uh, but Tip refused to name his team. And his no. last name is Major. So I named it for him. Tip is the Majorettes. Oh, I'm no. Sorry. No, no, no. You are the majorettes. You look at you every haven't stopped report. It yet. You haven't I stopped tried. it yet. So, so yeah, you know Im what? I may need a tutorial on that. And, and Imran knows. I, I called him up and I asked him a couple of questions. My team is always Bum Rush Brothers. That is that is the name of but my you team. you didn't put it in. So I you may didn't. need a little bit of I may need a little bit of assistance on how to change that because I changed it on the player profile, but it just didn't change it on. It still has my name on there. Well, until well, it gets maybe changed, you're wrong. the majorettes. I'm, I'm not going to be the major. We're just getting changed tonight. We're, 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 we'll switch it up, baby. We got you. We'll get you on the right page. Uh, but you yeah. know one thing, Greg, I wanted to say real quick, I, I love the app because it brings not only the younger generation together, it brings the, the mid-generation, like myself, 40 years old. It also brings the older generation together, and I'm not gonna call you old. Yeah, you can call me old. It's okay. I'm but old. It, it, bring, it brings you guys together. It brings all of us together. So, like, think about an event where we are all together. It doesn't necessarily have to be Thanksgiving. It doesn't have to be during the football season. That's what's beautiful about it. You can We're bring all of the these people. Now. You can bring all of these people together, and if you want to pick Fran Tarkington, Greg, you can pick Fran Tarkington. That was JC. I if, picked Warren Moon. If you want to pick more, any of these players, and you guys, it's so fun because you can actually reminisce. It's got a little nostalgia to it. You can reminisce well, about these players back in those days. It's so well, fun. first of all, Imran, tell us about Imran Purvais. You did not start out as a fantasy football or fantasy sports wizard. What was your day job, and do you still have it? Yeah, I mean, I – it wasn't originally planned. Like, obviously, I, I was actually certified in graphic design. So I wanted to be a graphic designer at heart. I was an artist. I love to draw. Uh, you see a bunch of toys back there. Like, I'm a collector guy. I love collecting stuff. My walls are color funky. And just a quick story behind the colors of my walls so people don't think I'm tripping. It's the color of the PlayStation controller when I'm facing it. So square is pink on that side. X is over here. I got green on that side. And I got red over here. So just clear that out. But, yeah, so my day job, I'm, I'm, I guess you could say I'm in the finance industry. I'm a 
bank, I'm a branch manager. So I manage an institution. I worked in many institutions in the past. Um, really, it was more because I went into school for accounting. I was trying to get a job in the design industry, but I graduated early in, in, in high school. So when I got certified by Adobe, even though I had a portfolio, people kind of didn't believe in me. They didn't think I was real. They thought I was kind of playing around. So it sucked, even though I was credible and had an opportunity. Still had to make some money. Still had to do my things. So ended up going into banking while I was going at, at to school for my accounting degree. And I just did well at it. So I kind of just kept going with it. And yeah, right now I've been hard to say, but like 14 years in the industry, which is crazy to say. Um, but at the same time, I think playing fantasy football helped me get some rage out, helped me deal with some nonsense at the institution and schools and this and that. And really got into fantasy football. Um, I would, I think my first year was 2007. Now that I actually looked at it, I did win the first league. So that was the reason why I kept going. Uh, but yeah, I'm currently still working there. But ultimately, the goal is really my our, our baby right now as a group is a group of five of us in generations that are just working on this app to make it the best thing we can, make it fun for everybody. And just we want everybody to enjoy the fun that we had when we were going through the pandemic, trying to figure out if there was going to be sports or not. Um, so that was kind of the background of how it came up. Uh, eventually, I'm trying to get out of banking so I could just be a full generational guy, baby. That's what I'm trying to do. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, you say you know, the generations and how did this come about? I mean, how did you guys come up with the concept of bringing in the old players or the legends, bringing in, or, you know, keeping some of the current players, keeping that flavor together? I just want to know what was some of the concepts you guys came up with uh, thinking about that? Yeah. So it all started with our CEO, Nick Uzilia, right? He's the, the master plan guy. He's the one who set everything up, build everything to kind of what it is right now. Um, so Nick actually, thought about it himself, talked about it with us, talked about it with his family. was like, hey, I want to play football, fantasy football. But during the pandemic, we just didn't know if we were going to have sports. Like yeah. like he always says, once Rudy Gobert start, started touching the mics, we were like, oh, <laughs> here, we, here we go, dude. Like, what the hell's going to happen? And then, of course, he set up the trigger. After that, that's when we got paranoid about it because it was one of the things, like, me personally, fantasy keeps people together. I have so many different leagues of different old job groups, friends, family, whatever it could be. And we're still rocking together. And sometimes it's really the only place we get to talk, right? And I think it's it's a real thing for everybody. It's sometimes the only way we get to escape and chat a little bit. And once we really, once Nick really kind of planted this idea, he got a couple of family members over to his grandma's house. They were able to pick names, pick pick weeks and and uh, seasons and weeks out of hats, and then they were able to actually execute scoring. Um, once that idea worked, he brought it over to me, my other partners, uh, Christian Kirindongo. Uh, Michael Iannuzzi and Michael Waite, those are the rest of the guys in the crew there, um, got together and say, okay, what can we do to actually put from pen to paper and paper to actual application? Um, uh, the, that's, the yeah. application is fun, but I've got to ask you because I saw a comment in the chat about, you know, give me LaDainian Tomlinson. Now, that's who I got. The, the, current, the current iteration does not reward the bat well you get the yardage and the touchdowns but it doesn't really reward the backs that catch a lot of balls because you don't get a point per reception i think you told me you guys are working on more flexibility in the scoring system is that going to happen in the next six months definitely that's something that's 100 in the timeline so we do have a very strict timeline of things we want to do but thanks to you and thanks to the guys joining this doing joining the league here helped us really pinpoint what the users need Right. We were just us guys playing around with it. And you know what? There's there's some bias, right? Being the creators of the app. It's like, listen, we need to get it in front of people and just poke our whole stab us, hurt us as much as possible so we can repair and get stronger. Um, the good thing is about it is a lot of the feedback we've been getting are things we are working on, which is a beautiful thing. So it's just helping reinforce like, OK, we need to put the focus on this and keep it pushing. Customize scoring, uh, customize customization for the entire league development. So instead of doing just uh, eight weeks or 10 weeks or 20 weeks is being able to do 52 weeks, being able to do a day of full on league. So that let's say you have a family reunion, you're chilling with your family. You can literally spend the whole day talk, beating each other up on an application, <laughs> talking trash. And at the end of the family reunion, you got a champion and you got to wait till next year to be able to talk trash again. So it's, there's so many different reasons why we want to be able to get it to where it'd be when it comes to customization. Uh, so the ball is rolling. Of course, there's there's going to be levels to be able to make an improvement. So we're making some aesthetic improvements, a couple other things at the same time, just to make sure fluidity of the application is nice and smooth. The next thing we're going to try to work on is the queue, which is something we've actually talked about a little bit to improve that aspect. Uh, but then also player data, uh, making sure we have the full customization to do half PPR, full PPR bonuses, a full custom issues or whatever you want to do, and then being able to fully customize the league as well. Yep. 
so Imran, talk to us a little bit about the random algorithm of picking, like whenever you pick your players. So you draft, guys, you draft just like you would draft a team. And once the draft is over, there is a pool of players or a waiver wire where you can pick different players. So talk to us a little bit without giving us a little too much information, but about the algorithm, tell them how the scoring is, it comes about. So we built in an algorithm, thanks to our developer, uh, a randomization piece, right? So what it will do is, let's say you have X player, what they'll do is they'll randomize first a season in their career, then a week in that season. They'll take the points and statistics from that game, and we'll be able to push that through as fantasy points. Once it translates to fantasy points, you see where they're at, and then we actually have a staggered release right now. So over the course of, let's say, an hour game, you'll have your quarterback release first, your, right, your running backs, running back, wide receiver, wide receiver, tight end, Flex, flex. So that's actually the structure right now. Again, looking to customize that as well down the line. Um, and the beauty of it is we, with the data, which we actually scraped ourselves. So we, we self-scraped the data. We're self-funded. Literally just five dudes. Like, how can we get this to work? Got it together and tried to figure it out. Uh, once we pulled the data, we got rid of all the bye weeks. We got rid of all the games that nobody has actually played. But if they have taken at least one snap, whether or not they did anything with it, that's a part of the data. So that creates... The, the the opportunity Randy to get Moss, a good game, games. bad game, which has happened, which it has did. happened. Oh, yeah, so, it has happened. You know, yeah. so it, and that's the beauty of it, because in fantasy, you're looking at the game, you're watching, you, you you love, I love the game so much that I want to watch every single play. So I got red zone up, I got every game up possible. Right. I am a Jet fan, so last season once Aaron Rodgers went down, I had to watch everybody else. So that's where I was at then, but you're, I'm just addicted to it. I love the game. Now, the real question for us was how can we keep people attached to it and really just enjoy it? That's where the staggered release comes in. And we're also working on different ways to, to implement the data to kind of give that push and pull feel for you to really sweat. And I think right now it's kind of working because you sometimes are starting off with three, four, zero. Then you got 35, 45, and somehow you win it. So it is giving you that fantasy feel and they're making you sweat a little bit. So you have that anxiety at the same time. Yeah, I, I tell you, the one of the recommendations that I made that I'm very serious about is add bench players and the reason for that is because part of fantasy football my generation when we trash talk it's mild compared to what tips generation is which is mild to what some 20 year old <laughs> i mean seriously we're not evil but we do we do like to brag and we like imran played me today okay i went out and picked up brett Favre. he started aaron Rodgers. Aaron Rodgers put a kick down on me, 30 some points, and I got nine points from Brett. So what what um I like about this is I would love that we could have multiple, you know, I said one extra player at each position. And by position, I mean each scoring position. So instead of one quarterback you get two quarterbacks and two, two running backs you get three running backs instead of two flex players it could be running back wide receiver or tight end you get three of them that way you have to bench somebody and a flex player is not a running back or a wide receiver he's a flex player so that when you name somebody a flex player you take him out of his running back wide re that way you can have bonehead move of the week um, I love the fact that you can run the games one a day or one a week because one a week you can stretch it out and you can have a real season where one a day is a little fast, but for beta testing, it's working out pretty good. We started this um, Sunday. We had the draft on Saturday, if I recall correctly. Yes. And then it was an eight team league. So there's going to be seven games because of the current scheduling only allows there's no real scheduling format you just play everybody once um yeah and and so imran had a three and oh start and i was two and one i had a two and oh start lost my third game and then we played today now i'm i've got two losses imran <laughs> got one loss last week uh day before thanks yesterday. for the blessing greg i appreciate it yeah, well, <laughs> and no, i know you may be being nice to me but you know no you did good but yeah you're gonna face me again in the playoffs and we'll see what happens there i love but it I, I love the concept but one of the things i want is the ability to screw up which means you may you you have a bench 
Is that even feasible in this release or will that be way down the road? It's feasible. Um, I think it could be uh, coming up in the, in the totem pole when it comes to priority, just because it's been coming up so much. The reason why we did keep it just to the base level there, just to give some explanation is because we wanted to make sure one, the actual app worked right. Again, a couple of dudes new to the game, um, getting an outside an outsourced kind of developer to work on this stuff. We were really worried about, okay, we can, we can put all the dreams and everything into in front of his face, but is he really going to make it happen? And is he really going to make it good? Um, so we wanted to make sure, one, we gave him a concise amount of players. I believe he worked with 400 or 450 players to start with, work with that format, kind of work with the scheduling, what it is, standard scoring, just to make sure the idea worked. The fact is the idea is working. The beauty of it is now we have something to continue to build on. And this is where the conversations to jump on with guys with you, right, to, to talk about it with real players who actually understand what and feel that feel that that essence of I want this because this is what I need when I usually play fantasy, right? We needed to have that specificity. So once we understand that, now we actually know what to target and really focus on our time. Once we focus on our time and energy into specific things like that, it's going to grow and get better. And then um, when it comes to the players, obviously we have a huge list of players we want to add now because we know it works. We can actually we can actually afford the space to do it, and we know it's going to work perfectly fine. That's going to be an addition coming up really soon. Uh, the updates when it comes to the expansion of the schedules, expansion of um, just full customization, that's all going to be there. But eventually the, ben the bench spots will be there. But in order for you to feel one thing why we didn't add the bench spots also with, with where, where it's at now is once you drop a player, there is no waiver period. The next right. guy can pick them up and you can instantly regret, oh, man, I should have never dropped Warren Moon. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe I'm just foreseeing something. But yeah, I'm regretting that, could, that could be the case. So that could be the case. So it still adds that little sizzle there. Yeah, yeah and, and as far as me, uh, you know, I did see in the comments – I'm not where these guys are in the league. I, I'm I'm two and three. I'm I'm seven out of eight. Uh, so I'm 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 not. You know I'm I'm trying to figure that algorithm out. I'm like I'm like all right. Look, I'm trying to be as random as I can with some of these players because you just never know when you're gonna hit. You never know where you're gonna hit. And there was a couple of players where I picked Cam Newton a couple of weeks ago or a couple of days ago, and I was like, well, he's a rushing quarterback. He, he provides points. Consistency kind of fell off a little bit towards the end of the career, or you know, he's really not done yet. But uh, towards the end of you know him being in New England and everything, so I was like, all right, let's go with another running quarterback, Michael Vick, and he gave me twenty five points. So I was like, okay, so that's it's kind of one of those things where you just kind of I'm just playing around with my roster, like Imran just said, I can pick up anybody off the bench. I think today I picked up Chad Johnson off the bench, and he was one of my favorite players growing up. So on the bench, though, that's the crazy part. Yeah, on the, he, so he, imagine saying that the, on the bench. Yeah, yeah, he's he's out there. So I picked him up and I put him in my lineup, and you know we just ran with it. But you know what, Greg? I think we got a guest. Don't we have a guest? We on? do have a guest. I, I want Yeah, JC, bring in Jack. Okay, hey, well, welcome guys? to the show, the host of the worst sports podcast <laughs> in the world. Jack Lucene. That's right. I've just been chilling back here listening to you guys, and I'm just I'm brimming with topics now. First of all, I got to say this hair hate. Something I <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hey, There we go, love, baby. Let's go. I love the hair. It's and Greg, the man bun. It's the way you I work in it. banking, man. I got, I, listen, in banking, long hair is not a good look. The beard is not a good look. But the fact that I still got a job in this industry looking like this, <laughs> I got to play the game, man. Hey, I got, I got to tell game. you, Imran, you've been talking to us at the Sports Affiliation. So you've gotten to know us a little bit. Jack has a really good podcast. Anybody listening should check it out. But Jack has stepped up, and he was actually the 11th of 12 entering we're doing another live draft on saturday i'm going to check and see if there's a 12th but we're going to be doing a 16 or a 20 uh team uh, auction after the 12th excuse me the 12 team one which will take uh, 12 teams is going to take two weeks 11 for the reg 11 days for the regular season plus two days for the playoffs Jack's going to be in the 12 team one. I think he's going to like so much he jumps into the big one too. But we'll see. Jack, what questions do you have? Man, I'm full of questions. Um, because I take honestly, three. Take three. <laughs> no, I, I wrote them all down. First of all, um, I I love this idea of you know drafting historical figures. Does it 
my first question, I guess, is does it account for comparing different eras and roles? Because I think obviously you look at uh, the careers of guys in the past, like a Johnny Unitas is never going to have the same kind of numbers as like a regular Jamoke nowadays. So I guess the first question I have to ask is, does the algorithm account for the historical differences in just like the eras of NFL and what they were played in and just like the levels of what those stats were, and especially because it used to be shorter game seasons in the past, right? So right now, I mean, the stats are stats, right? So even if, let's say, the season was shorter, it actually might work out for you better because then you know exactly what you're working with with those players because because the seasons are so short. Um, but no, we were, we're keeping the, the scoring flat, right? We don't want to give anybody an advantage. Of course, the newer players are able to do a little bit more, get a little bit spicier. But when it comes to customized scoring, when it comes to giving the users the ability to customize what they want and being able to maybe lock specifically certain generations and things like that, that's something that's coming down the line. That's would help would would help consider those types of those those statistics and results. So my other question was kind of um, a spinoff of something Greg had asked about, I guess, reducing randomness. And you know, his idea and variation of doing it was to do it through the lineups by essentially having more lineup spots. And you know, I've had this kind of ponderance of. Because I play so many different fantasy sports, uh, like fantasy basketball and hockey and baseball, those are considered uh, what I call dailies because they basically run for every game of the week um, because you're essentially going off historical data. You're not beholden to the NFL schedule the way regular fantasy would be. Uh, do you find that there's maybe a potential where not only could you have like the standard version of what would be fantasy football known to most people, but you could eventually maybe take that path of, you know, exploring the idea of like the dailies. I think you kind of mentioned too, where you're able to uh, modernize and customize the settings of the league for like how long you want it to be. Right. So that the deeper customization is going to come along later, but right now you're able to either customize. So, Right now, for example, the season is based on how many teams you have in a league. So if you have eight teams, you're going to have seven weeks of the season so you can play every one at least once. Then you create go to the playoffs. At that point, top four teams, they'll be able to jump on to the, to the playoffs and be able to continue. The more teams you get, you just have to pretty much subtract one. So if you have 20 teams, it's 19 weeks, so on and so forth. Then you can choose the frequency. So right now, again, like I said, the base, this is a beta test because we want to make sure it works. It's only locked to doing a game weekly or daily. So you can do a daily game right now. So that's actually what we're doing at this point. Right. So you can either do weeks and you can climb up 20 weeks or 19 weeks or X amount of weeks based on your player, based on how many users are on the on the league. Or you can do a daily to make it just keep going and going and going and make more and more. So I know Greg, Tip, and I are going to be doing a lot more leagues because Absolutely. it's just that quick. We're already almost done with our first league. You know, you know, whooping Greg's ass. But um, <laughs> <laughs> but that's that's eventually we're going to get there. So eventually we'll get to really customization. But right now, I mean, Let's be real. Like I said, we're self-funded. You know, if I was a millionaire, my house would look, would look a lot better. But that's what we're also looking to do at the same time, being able to get the right outreach to get connected with the right people and hopefully help bolster us up a little bit. Hey, Jack, before you ask your last question, well, last of this set, <laughs> who's the highest scoring team in the league right now, Imran? Just asking. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> uh, let's check. Uh, all right, I know Jack. who's first. I know who's first. <laughs> Record-wise, but I've outscored you. Except head to head. Oh, it's too bright there. <laughs> but you know bright. what? I'm first. So that's all that matters. Oh, the light's too strong there. But yes, you are the highest score. You have 515. JC is there at 490. And I'm at 480. Mm. But hey, matchups are key, baby. They are. <laughs> Jack? Okay. So you mentioned JC. Shout out to him. I would be remiss if I didn't ask an IDP question. Uh, is that a potential, uh, like, is that already built in or is that a potentiality? Because you're cutting the league in half, especially when you're talking about historically, hey, I want my night train lanes and my mean Joe greens in there. It's So the crazy thing is we have the data. So we have it. Now we just got to implement it into, into the game itself. But we got to make sure we get there first. I think there's other things that we got to grow on to make sure it's really working to the best possible way before we can add additional different type of game types. So we're thinking, we were thinking best ball. We were thinking some type of dynasty type of format, but this is where, again, we start talking to people, get ideas because this is, again, 
as much as there is a format already for dynasty and these other things, our league is a little bit different because there's historical players, so many amount of players to work with. We need to make sure we kind of perfect it. So it is when it's out there, it's, it's fun and appealing at the same time. Tip. Yeah. I mean, it, again, guys, this is a very addicting, very fun, um, very appealing, man. It, it's so much fun. I, you know, I, I haven't had this much fun losing. So, you know, I'm, I'm not, I'm, I don't, I don't take losing well, but I am losing right now. I'm, I'm two and three. Uh, you know, I understand the situations that are up on me. I love the IDP questions. What about kickers? What about, I mean, you know, we, what, do you have the data for them as well? I mean, kickers need love too, Imran. I mean, you know, I, I just, you know, just wanted to know about those guys too. I endorse kickers. In leagues, I'm one of those guys that says we need a kicker. And you can ask any one of the leagues I'm in. We all have kickers in them. Yeah. So, again, we have the data. It's just really about making sure it's working, making sure. So, we even we, we even talked about um, all-time defenses. So, that was another thing we wanted to do. But the data became a little bit tough because we we pulled all yeah. individuals versus the team. So we were thinking about you know old school bears or Legion of Boom or when my Jets actually did some work in the defense. We're doing we did good last year, but you know this is from group for growth always. But that's the, another thing we did explore. It got a little complicated when it came yeah. to just doing the team like team defenses itself. Um, but when it came to individual players, it's crazy to sound it sounds, but it's actually easier with individual players. We just got to implement it into the into the algorithm and also the structure of the app. So we can go ahead and add that feature in there. But again, it's going to be something that's down the line we're thinking about. I, I'm going to figure this algorithm out. I'm telling you before, before, before this, it may not be after, it may not be this go around, but you know, if I get into another league, I'm going to figure this bad boy out. And I'm going to, I'm uh, going to get on. The good thing is it doesn't repeat games too. So once you get a game yeah. or even a bad game, you're like, okay, I got this bad game. As much as you want to drop them, you might be dropping a good game coming up. So and you know what? again, that's another thing you're thinking about. And that's Warren why I'm Moore. keeping Jimmy Graham because I'm like, I know Jimmy Graham is a guy that you, I mean, look, he had a 16 touchdown season with 1200 yards. So I'm just like, can he get yep. one of those, one of those, one of that season? But yeah. And I gambled with Gurley this week. That was one yeah. thing too. Like I know get Gurley wasn't, you know, he, he actually is because of him. I lost a league. I remember that. I'm never going to forget it, but I actually picked him up. I said, you know, like, give me a chance, bro. I tried to get Anthony down. to trade me Randy Moss after back-to-back -back zero points. And Moss still has not had a breakout game, but I want him on my roster. Um, bottom line, though, is this is the beginning for you guys. I, I seem to recall going to your website, and you're not called Generations Fantasy Football. You're called Generations Fantasy Sports. The plan is for you to have multiple sports. Can you tell us what sports are currently on the drawing board? And are any other ones close to being able to test? As of right now, uh, baseball, basketball are kind of the easiest ones we can try to work on. We're exploring other sports because they are more popular in other countries as well. So it's an opportunity there. Again, I think football, because it's so quick and everybody is pretty much quick, you know, able to jump on it pretty fast, it was the easiest subject to test. Um, but yeah, the other sports are in play. We also, I think actually how this really started was how can we co-mingle all these sports together? Yeah. So that's something we're also thinking about where let's say you have two slots of football players, two slots of baseball players, two slots of basketball players, whatever you want to structure it, but building a scoring system that makes sense. That's something we're kind of tweaking up and working out at that point. Jack, you got to have a question based on these questions. Yeah, there's actually something kind of similar that exists but it's uh famously uh, like dave damashek and they like do it manually where they have like they're a league that they run specifically where it's like all four of the major sports and i was gonna say with hockey the problem is uh whoever gets wayne gretzky automatically wins because i don't think he ever had a bad game in his life so that's that and that's the thing right now? We want to be able to at least have that have that variability. I think variability is a key piece. So yeah. if you have those sports where guys are just knocking it out the park every single time, you kind of you kind of lose the sizzle. And once that guy gets that first pick, you already know where it's going. There's no like a first pick for us in this league. You really don't know who's going to be first. And I think that's the beauty of it. I watched your um, website. You have a a video of a draft that you guys did. That was, the first, that was the first draft that we ever did. That together. Controversially, you had kickers and team defenses uh, in that one. And I recall being a fan of all things Detroit, who the very first player drafted was. Do you want to school my boy Tip and then let him ask a question? 
Um, so what, our first pick of what we had that 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 uh, league. Yeah. I mean, I believe it was Barry Sanders. It was. I believe it was Barry, baby. Yeah, I, I mean, yeah, I mean, how could you? You can't go wrong with Barry Sanders. You can't. You cannot go wrong. Someone with from him. my show. <laughs> yeah, you cannot go wrong with Barry Sanders. But what I will say this, um, you know, I love the fact that I play. I've been playing fantasy football since 2005, right? There's several players on my, that I've never been able to draft due to they may be injured. They may. Uh, I just never get that pick. And one of them was Adrian Peterson. And I was able to play with Adrian Peterson on my team. So it was fun to see that concept. And, and Imran, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure that is something that you guys are looking at as well because you make those players so readily available. Now, once you get a player on your team that's hot, like JC had, he had Patrick Mahomes on his team. He's going to stick with Patrick Mahomes. He's been really hot here as of late. But that had to have been something that you guys wanted to look at as well, right? I mean, yeah, I mean, ultimately, we wanted to be able to relive, like, the, the golden years of the players we enjoy. So AP, I think a lot everybody knows AP, right? But now the question is, which AP are you getting? Are you getting Vikings AP? Are you getting Redskins AP? You know, you, you know, you don't know. You don't, well, or maybe Commanders. I mean, let me change that. <laughs> that yeah, whatever. Yeah. End of the yeah, day, you so just don't know what you're going to get, you know? So it's, it's, and I think that's the cool thing about it, too. Like, so even Antonio Brown, I had Antonio Brown in my league, and I think the matchup I lost, I got a game from him from the Patriots. And it was like his literally his first game on the Patriots. Yeah. And he called, I think, one pass or two passes. And I was like, oh, there we go. Okay, that's fantastic. But I think the week after, he ended up doing something good for me. So, again, the variability is a beautiful thing because as much as you know, these guys are bang out all-stars. Everybody has stacked teams. Someone's still going to store 67 points against 107. Look, I had Chris Johnson on my team, guys. CJ2K. I had Arian Foster on my team, guys, and CJ2K got zero points. And I looked and I went back and I was like, man, what the hell? What, what, what kind of stats did he have? He had one carry for, I think it was negative two yards or two yards or something. And you got to get negative one. Right, I remember looking at You got to get 10. You got to get 10 yards to get a point. So I was like, what the hell? What kind of CJ2K <laughs> is this? And Arian Foster. And I was like, man, I must have got the Miami Dolphins area Foster because I shouldn't get the Houston Texans area Foster. So it's just so much, so many different variables. But go ahead, Greg, you take it. Okay, I, I did want to say something, and we'll go back to Jack. One of my recommendations was kind of a selfish one it, because bigger leagues, I think, are exciting. Uh, since you can have up to 20 leagues, what I thought was – how about we take five guys from football guys, five guys from the TSA, five guys from fantasy pros, and five guys from fantasy sharks. And then instead of the top four teams make the playoffs, the winners of each division make the playoffs. And that way, somebody from each site is in the playoffs, and then you can actually – really do some trash talking about sites. I just think that would just make it a little bit more interesting. That's all. Imran, <laughs> I know that you got to prioritize changes. And to me, adding divisions is probably a, a uh, pretty big change. Is that something you can see happening? And yeah. would it be desirable? And I see, and that's the thing. So I, I've been in leagues that have divisions. I have leagues that are no divisions. I think there's a very, there's strong groups that say no hell with divisions and there's groups that say, yes, I need divisions. So we want to be able to give everybody the opportunity to play what they want to play. So yes, that's something we want to do down the line. Um, our goal, so, so we have a couple of things. So one of the things we're going to be doing and we're really excited about is the Fantasy Football Expo. You know, that's going to be in August. And we're actually going to be the breakout stage sponsor on the Sunday. So super excited to be able to have that FaceTime, the stage time. We're going to be trying to do some drafts and do some things live, maybe some giveaways, some cool stuff going on there. But through all these stages, so really we're trying to make the best product we can uh, with as many additions as we can by July. That I think that's going to be the goal we were trying to get to. Yes, it's a little bit aggressive, but you got to be aggressive, bro. So I think once yeah. we once we hit the certain benchmarks of what we want to hit, and by the time we get to July, we can strategically plan and have some fun going on into the expo. But even if we don't hit the gold by July, we still got some time to work with. So, again, being aggressive but also being real with each other. Um, and also, again, the team of us guys, the five of us guys, we really just bounce it off each other to say, okay, how many times have you used this? How many times have you used this? Then we also talk to our peers. And then hopefully with that, we're able to kind of create that prioritization at that point. And you guys have been huge, huge help. And, I, again, 
thank you guys all for what you've been doing. You guys have been fantastic for giving us the things that we need to get better. Jack? Uh, I appreciate so far that Imran has been like the best, uh, very much my counterpart here. Um, and like, it's like, why am I here? I'm the Jamoke that like is going to be, you know, using this at the end of the day. Um, so like, I guess the one thing that I've kind of heard through all this, I guess the one concern, I guess I would say I have is from my understanding so far is the waiver wire is like endless in the sense of if it's every NFL historical figure ever, it's like, well, you can just like kind of. So I guess, is there like limited uh, waiver moves like per, so it's just a, that part Free for all, baby, because you know what's crazy? So when we talk about, when we talk about being, making a bonehead move, there's a lot of bonehead moves to make because you could, you could think again, you're picking up an all-star, but the all-star drop zero. So, and that's the beauty of it too, because you're, you're so, I think sometimes too much freedom, you end up restricting yourself. You're like, you know what? I'm just going to leave my squad the way it is. And that's how I was until I took that L I said, nah, I got to change it up. I got lucky with the change-ups. But, hey, man, Gurley could have been Gurley when he did me dirty, when he made me lose my league that year. So I was going to have that. If that would have happened, my phone would have been out the window. So I have my phone still. (laughs) And Because he would have been losing to me if that had happened. But I got to tell you, right now, the the list is – you can sort it by position, but the the list is not all-encompassing. Now, when I first – signed on to do this i was told all players with three years worth of stats and that's not true because the first thing i did was go in and look at some historic players from my youth mel far alti taylor bill munson um charlie batch these are all detroit lion players that had more than three years in the nfl mel far was a two-time all pro he's not there so you started with, you said, 450 to 500 players. Yeah. When will you start actually getting all? Because you asked me to provide you a list of players that I would like to see. Bronco Nagorski. But see, some of the players I would like to see are from before 1960. Right now, is 1960 a hard limit? Um, we were able to pull whatever we could. I think we have a little bit past the 60s as well. But there's some data we just couldn't get. So... There's a couple of things I know, like you mentioned, uh, like you you got me connected with a, with an awesome dude, Ronnie Evans. So he's gonna help. He's helping me actually work through AI to help kind of gather the rest of the stuff that we're missing, or figure out ways to see if we can have AI almost watch the games and pull up the stats themselves. So again, we have a lot of the players. Again, in the beginning, we started with just a few, but we're definitely gonna be able to add those. So the good thing is we have those players. We just gotta be able to put it into the to the algorithm itself, add it on. We're going to back end test it to make sure it's working, no issues with the draft, so on and so forth. No games are missing when it comes to the randomization, and it'll be ready to release. So it's really just about executing the upload the right way. And once it's smooth, you'll be able to have the access to it. Yeah, I also mentioned that you might want to hook up with Stat Muse, the folks at Stat Muse, because they probably have the best. I mean, you might have to contract yeah. rather than just if you data mine you're doing it for free it it's no cost to you if you if you work with a, a third party then you're paying for the stats um so that's always going to be a consideration because one thing you haven't talked about is how are you going to get your investment back how are you going to make money at this because you're not charging us anything at least not yet so there's some ideas and i think the biggest thing for me like i i don't like to be the guy to create an application for people to enjoy, but then force people to pay a $5 fee every single time they want to play. Um, so the couple of things we actually have, so I have a little bit of a list here. So definitely I think the easy way to do it is your traditional way of advertising, your basic stuff there. I think that's the baseline there. Um, one thing we really love is being able to add a pay to play contest, right? And different types of contests. So either where we have, let's say I set up, so let's say, you know, be Imran, I'll create a, I'll create a lineup. We're going to have a bunch of people just create a lineup themselves and go ahead and go head to head with me. Highest score or highest person that destroyed me, whatever, they'll probably win something, whether it's a prize, maybe first, second, third, win the cash prize or win a giveaway, something like that. Um, being able to continue that with other different types of plays. So either you create, we actually create big leagues, like maybe 20 team, 30 team, 40 team, actual big leagues, almost like a Scott Fishbowl type of thing. 
and kind of do things like that where we can actually have people all together, chime in, chip in a little bit. Maybe we can even do some charity work at the same time so people will take a piece of it, but then again, most of it will go to charity. So there's a lot of different things like that that we want to do. We're also thinking about an also an e-commerce e-commerce store where we're going to be having our own branded stuff, our own branded trophies, things like that. Because Generations is a different thing on its own. You know, we want to try to do some stuff like that, have our little cool G on a belt, maybe on a trophy, things like that. Throw that stuff around, maybe a nice ring. I bought some sick rings because of my past championships. So I definitely love rings. I want to make sure people get to enjoy that. Another thing we're also exploring, I did talk to another cool gentleman. His name was Thomas Christopher over at Topham Sports. If somebody I definitely think you guys should talk to. Um, he also works with NFTs and crypto, things like that of nature. So one thing I actually love is having some type of collector cards, a part of our app, right? Whether it's bought an app, you can trade with each other, so on and so forth. So it wouldn't give you a bump or, a, um, or increase while you're playing the game, but a cool niche of, of having, let's say, let's say you collected a, a, a very limited, very limited Tom Brady card, for example, if you have Tom Brady on your roster, it would be the color of the card you got. So platinum, mm. gold, silver, bronze, a way to a way to talk to people saying, yo, I got this card. You don't. So even though you're going head to head, you may lose. I still got my platinum Tom Brady. That's worth X amount right to each other. So that's another thing we're also exploring. Um, so there have been a couple of different things that we're working on. We also are actually developing a couple of other stuff like mock drafts. We want to be able to have people do mock drafts and be able to test it out, have some fun with that um, uh, internal league chat and community board so people can talk with each other um also built in badges and trophies like you know if you're winning you know like me right now you get a trophy after after whooping some a and and getting a trophy kind of embedded in your user profile so be able to kind of share like that so there's there's a lot of ideas there but it's really going to be the next level of getting us the funding to be able to get to do that um and it's going to take users it's going to take feedback from everybody else from everybody like you guys yourselves as content creators from other people in general who are just out in the industry just want to play the game like everybody matters. And like it, we're really literally asking everybody to play with it, break it. We need you to break it. So I have a reason to go to somebody saying, Hey, I broke it, man. We got people here. Come on and put some money in the pocket. So one, you can join the fun. We can make it better and build this community because end of the day. Also, I also want to make sure people understand we're a supplement to fantasy. We're not trying to take it over. We are the off season fantasy option, right? So once Super Bowl is done and you're going ahead and you're, uh, want to be able to get to the next level. Literally, Super Bowl is our preseason. And once it's over, get to generations. You're all the way literally up to up to preseason itself when it comes to the league, and you jump in it. That's when we jump in and do our thing. Um, depending on how you want to do it, once we get that uh, the customization in there, you can make it to what you want to. Jep. Jep, you're, you're muted. You're muted. Yeah, we lost Tip. All right. Hello. Can you hear yeah, me? There, there we go. go. There, there we go. go. Yeah. So I, I'm definitely trying to break the system. I'm I'm changing players constantly. I'm trying to figure this thing out. But you know, it's it's interesting that you said it because I was going to ask when the regular season starts. I mean, obviously we can still play. You know, we can still play with. You know, I think it's actually going to be fun. You know, playing with current players and partnering them up with, you know, legends as well. So, I mean, I know the app's not going to go away during the regular season, but I do understand the fact that you said that this is something while we don't have football, but, you know, year, football now is year-round. There's something always going on. Every month there's something going on. So I think this kind of bridges that gap uh, for people who may not be, um, you know, not, not into it fully like we all are, um, but they want to, you know, play something, talk trash, you know, do whatever it is. But, you know, during the regular season, we're still going to be going strong on this still, right? I mean, that's still the plan is to keep these current players with these these legends. Yeah, players. and the cool thing is, right, so what we did was once the Super Bowl finished, we were able to update 2023 stats, right? Because so we, we also include playoff history, right? So we got every game. And again, oh, in wow, fantasy, okay. you're not able to take advantage of playoff. Sometimes playoff performance mm. is wild. Right. So Look at that's, Eli Manning. <laughs> So that's another thing too, right? So it's another thing to think about. So once the once the season ends and the Super Bowl's finished, we grab the data, we upload it. So that was something we nice. did immediately after 2023 was over. So that's how we're doing it right now. That's a great question out of the audience. T asked, what happens if the game ends in a tie? So because we don't have the like the half system or whatever, we actually do have ties a part of the standing right now. Okay. So does it just go to the person who has the higher standing? Well, right now, let's say if, if a matchup is tied, it's tied. Then once it gets over to the the regular like, end of the season, points four will be the next the next four. level of that. 
Got yeah, it. if you if you actually look at the matchup, it has next to your name, W number, L number, T number. It took me a long time to figure out what those were because the letters are so small. Wins, <laughs> losses, and ties. Jack, did you have a question? Um, yeah, just I guess so. Being in Canada, I always have to ask like. Um, internationally speaking, like what are some of the expansions? I guess you kind of touched on it a little bit with like, you're limiting yourself to a degree because you're in the very beta stages, like you mentioned. Um, but I feel like, you know, I got to shout out hockey, obviously being in Canada, but soccer also huge untapped yeah. market. Um, that's gotta cricket. be something that cricket is something we've also thought about. Too, soccer is one of the sports. Yeah. Soccer's one of the sports at their website the generations okay. website so yes we yeah. have plans we definitely got plans for all of that it's again just making sure we have something as perfect as possible and then it, it's less it's less work for us to implement other sports at that point because once we create this perfection as close as we can be then we just got to really flip the script and just change positions change scoring systems add players and it becomes we take the template and just flip it over at that point all right uh mr t wanted to thank you for clarifying and he Boom. actually he actually called you <laughs> Mr. Purvez, um, which astounds me that you would give that kind of honor to anyone who wears a man bun. But uh, we'll also I, look I, ass, I should go man. away. Don't worry about it. Right, right. You're right. Ah! Yeah. <laughs> I mean, Jack at least has the the pride to wear his hair down. No, but I'm pretty <laughs> sure Jack has a hair tie somewhere in that room. Where oh he, yeah, he, he, I see the wrist. Like, you got you got a hair tie on the wrist. Let's see it. Look, see, ah, I already knew it. I already knew. I didn't have to. Know. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna hire mobile barbers to visit you all. <laughs> no nah, man, I got look at this. Look at this fake baby. Come on, I got my. Oh barber. yeah, he's got he's got a crispy. There you go. Sure. It's crispy. <laughs> nice. Oh no, so uh, I gotta I gotta say again, we have one spot open, potentially, in a draft, a live draft that's going to take place Saturday at noon my time, one o'clock Eastern time. All the times are set up to Eastern time because these New York boys think that they're the end all be all of the world. But that's that's how not. it is. That's how we were raised, man. That's how I was raised. Say, mama, my mom told me the world revolves around me. So I got a, I got a question <laughs> in Twitter uh, X about, you know, one minute. That's, that's hard. You can set the timer down to 15 seconds per pick and up to 90 seconds. But a minute is plenty of time. I mean, what you don't, and if somebody goes offline, you guys even plan for that. If a guy drops out, his clock automatically goes to 10 seconds if he's not active on the app when the draft is taking place. I think that's genius. But the gameplay if you're a newbie to fantasy sports, the complexity of trying to project how people are going to do, uh, you know, JC loves to play in the matchups, but the matchups don't always work out for you. And it gets complex and people get frustrated. With this, it's all random. You don't have to worry about any of that. The gameplay is the gameplay. Now, I do really want to get bench players so that you have to make decisions. But other than that, uh, I think this is a much easier game. And I want to take a poll of you three. Do you find this easier than regular fantasy football? Uh, Jack, you haven't tried it yet, but what do you think? Do you think it'll be easier for the gameplay once the draft is done? Well, so that's kind of was going to be my next question for Imran, actually. Uh, again, just reiterating that the whole reason I'm here is because I'm the worst. And we need to balance out the show with you three gentlemen who are all the best. Um, so, you know, I just, from a base level, uh, am still kind of looking to understand, you know, so from what I've gathered, it's standard scoring with historical figures. Uh, and uh, when I say standard scoring, I mean, you know, in terms of what I think of as the fantasy scoring setup, but also, like you mentioned, there's no incremental points. It sounds like it's a flat point system, and therefore that can lead to more ties, which, 
in my experience, leads to a lot more madness uh, and can be a lot more fun and intriguing, I find. Uh, so I like that the settings themselves are a bit of a throwback historically for fantasy in what is a essentially historic fantasy league. Yeah, I, I got to tell you, we played five weeks, four, five weeks of games, eight team league. So four per week. So that's 20 games. Um, we haven't had a tie. Mm -hmm. I, I think the closest we've been is maybe five points. So, um, yes, there will be ties. So just um, wait till you play with me because uh, so it, it, at work, my work, you know, Imran mentioned that, uh, you know, he runs banks basically. Uh, in my life, uh, I'm, again, a lot more of a jamoke. I'm closer to robbing banks than I am to running the damn thing. <laughs> but I managed to fall backwards into being a game tester. Uh, and, you know, I'm, I'm very lucky in life, blessed, I would say. Um, and, you know, at work, my, my gamer tag, you could say, is Murphy's Law. And the reason is that just for some reason, whatever can go wrong around me, will go wrong so i promise you greg when we play together this league there will be 17 ties the last league i played in that had flat scoring there were literally like five or six ties and on top of it that league ended on the bills bengals game the demar hamlin game Ooh. which unfortunately you know for demar hamlin you know left had to leave that game but again for fantasy messed up a whole lot of things and all the apps treated it differently and you know for the nfl app it was uh it was basically like they decided to just cancel out the game and it actually changed flipped the decision of the guy who thought he won actually lost and it was the commissioner of the league so it was like extra salty for him but yeah so just Wait till we're playing together because that, that's going to come back on us. Just watch. I need you there, Jack. I need you. I need you to break T, this thing, dude. Yeah. T, there's no reason at all uh, to go crazy because, like I said, I've got one spot left, and you can get into the league on Saturday if you can live draft. And if not, in two weeks, we're going to be doing a big team and have a lot of spots. Tip, easier or harder than regular fantasy? I, I would say that I would say that it's harder so far because there's so many, so much data that's out there with all of these older players. Um, I can look at trends from harder to win. Is it easier or harder to play? <laughs> it, it's harder. It's harder. It's harder to play too because you just don't know what you're gonna get. You don't. I think it's, and, and, I think it, it's much easier because. It, you pick your players and then you don't do anything. Yeah, you don't but, have to do anything. That's about as easy as it gets. Uh, but it, but you know, I I guess I'm equating easy to to winning, and I'm not winning, so maybe I'm a little salty. But <laughs> I will say, I will I will say I will say as far as doing the uh, the app, registering, getting online, drafting your team, that was simple, easy, easy money. But okay. it's but as far as I'm trying to, you know, me, I'm always trying to pick things out. I'm always trying to. Yeah dissect things i'm trying to figure out like okay well if i don't play this player this week i'm gonna play them this week and that's hard that it's hard for me because i don't like to sit with the same team when i know that i've got a hall of famer on the on the waiver wire and i want to play that hall of famer i've hey. been i was sitting there looking at brett Favre, and i was like oh my god brett Favre is sitting there and i'm sitting here with cam newton and I was oh, like, you man, know what? I'm, not gonna, right now. I'm not gonna do it i'm gonna I I, i'm not gonna right do it and, I, and then i started scrolling down and I was like, oh, shoot, Michael Vick's down there. All right, let me play Michael Vick. He ran the ball. He, you know, he got a lot of points. And I lucked out, and, and he did really well. So I'm trying to look at it from this era where you have a bunch of running-style quarterbacks and trying to implement that with some of these running backs who touch the ball 20-plus times a game where you don't see that nowadays. And some of these wide receivers who may not be getting as many points as they would this day and age. So I'm trying to mix and match some of those things. And so, it's fun. It's fun. Just so it. you know, in our little league, uh, I believe that Josh Allen and um, Lamar Jackson are both available on the wire. Uh, I think for beginners, for new people that have never played fantasy, this is much easier way to get into it and learn. 
Imran, you've played both regular fantasy and this. What do you think is easier? So here's the thing. I'm I'm a nerd with statistics. And during the season, oh, my God, I kill myself, man. Like, I, I will literally keep flipping <laughs> in and out, in and out. Oh, this matchup. Oh, he's injured. Oh, this. Oh, that. Uh, uh, uh. So, and that's just me. I'm an, I love anxiety, I guess, right? So that's just what we do. So that's, that's the way we play this. But over here... When it comes to generations, I think the hardest part is understanding that even though a player has been in the game for 15 years, 20 years, whatever it is, maybe it, all of it has not been great. So you're really looking for someone who has averaged pretty good statistics and maybe at a shorter time frame in a career. I, I really can't say who's harder, what's easier. I would say when it comes to not killing yourself mentally, I would say regular fantasy is harder. Because you're always you're overlooking statistics. But that's just me. I love looking at things too much. I'm not the set and forget it guy. So to, for me, generations would be easier. But for T people who just don't know, I think it's a, it's an opportunity for them to try it out and figure it out. I think so too. T had a question. JC, please put it back up on the thing. Uh, basically, he said, "Let's say I draft Steve Young. Is it possible that I can get a historical week when Steve Young was backing up Joe Montana?" and didn't score any points, I'd be sold. Now, JC answered that Young had to have at least one snap, one snap for it to count. So if he was just backing him up, never got off the bench, no, you won't get that game. But if he goes in at the end of the game, when the game's, and all he's doing is handing the ball off, Imran, does that game count? Yes, it does. Once you take a snap, to you. once you take a snap, and see that that right there, that's another reason why it's hard because you just don't know what you're gonna get from that player. Like I said, I got Chris Johnson on my and I, and I was salivating. I was like, oh my god, he's right there. And I was like, I'm picking him up. And he got zero points because the simple fact is you have to look at everything. You don't just and you know, I went back and I actually went to Stat Muse and I looked at several of these players' stats and I was like Oh, they had a five years where they had they they were the top you know three at their position, but they towards the tail end of their career they were like Jack would say a jamoke, so they they were just sitting there. So it's the like randomness. It, the randomness makes it so much more. It makes it fun. It makes it, don't get me wrong. It is absolute fun. But it does make it harder because you just don't know what you're going to get. It, it's I just, think over time it's going to get harder because you're going to get new players added. You're going to have more yep. statistics added. It gets harder as we stay alive, right? And to answer uh, T's question over here, yeah, so playoff games are a part of the history that we get. So as long as we actually capture the data, they played a game, took a snap, that game counts. So that's, that's the goal of it. We want to be able to be able to enjoy some of the playoff games as well. And I want to – see, my first big question was could I go out and find – one guy that had one game where he went off for 10 catches, 180 yards, and two touchdowns, and just play that game over and over and over again. You can't. You can't because once the game's played, you're done. Plus, you have to have three years' worth of stats. But a warning, three years' worth of stats means that Justin Jefferson is now available because he's got three years in the league. Jameer Gibbs and B. John Robinson are not. Sam Laporta? You got to wait two years before you get an access to Sam Laporta. So, um, and I love, I love, I, I do love that. I love the fact that you've got to wait because it's the NFL, you guys are building a consistent brand. You're building something with a player with consistency. And, you know, you got, and there's a ton of players out there in all sports who will have this one year out of nowhere. And then all of a sudden they disappear. So I love the fact that you're doing that too, man. It's, that's pretty cool. But the players, and I think Jack can attest to this, if you have a player that is like most NFL players, great weeks, terrible weeks, great weeks, terrible weeks, you don't know which one you're going to get. That makes it exciting to me because in regular fantasy, I can say, okay, that defense sucks, so I'm going to play everybody I can that play in them. And then for some reason, that defense throws a shutout. You got no control in fantasy. Control is a myth. It is. It, it is It is a pipe dream that a lot of us like to think we're better than other people because we can figure it out. 
when I, I tell everybody, even the best people at fantasy sports are wrong 40% of the time. That means that you get advice from anybody in fantasy, Hall of Famer or not, they're going to be wrong an awful lot of the time. So <laughs> I, I, can you get Kurt Warner's Super Bowls? Yeah, but you also get when he didn't do anything. <laughs> so, yeah, you can. Uh, you get him when he was bagging groceries. all right so you know it's seven o'clock i i really want to thank jack for coming on short notice jack came on short notice thank you so much imran we planned this since we first talked i gotta tell you i saw imran and nick on bob lung's um podcast bob is basically um going through the people that are going to be at the expo next year now tip and i are going to be at the expo jack you going to be there oh yeah i actually am going to be there cool here we go baby so you've got four of us right here imran with yourself included you got the makings of a draft right now we're all going to be there and i'll i will definitely be happy to draft but uh i don't dress up so (laughs) Yeah, you know, I'll be all good with me, I'll, baby. Just show up know, at least up. at least some underwear. I'll take that. Right? Just cover the cover the important stuff. Well, I might I might <laughs> we need wear. you to cover more than that, Greg. <laughs> I'll try to be kind, man. I whooped his ass earlier this week. So uh, yeah. Okay. Wait for the playoffs. You don't Listen, I'm gonna to, I gotta keep going while it's all on top. You don't baby. you don't want to brag first place, baby. I get in trouble for mission mentioning Michigan. JC gets upset when I talk about the natty that we got in Michigan this year, but Hey, I think we don't have that many natties. We're not Georgia. We're not Alabama. Listen, we my Super Bowl Alabama. is when the jets do rights, the good signings over the pre uh, over the, uh, the off season and then let them get injured. The first game, you know, like, like Mike Williams, I love the Mike Williams signing. He's going to get injured. Uh, and I hate to say it, but I think we've seen it too many times. So I love the signing. It's going to break my heart. So you guys, I, need, I need generations, bro. You guys are <laughs> – I understand that you're depending on a 39-year-old quarterback. That That's scary. He's doing, because, his, he's doing his thing for me right now. I think he's like 27 right now on my roster. Well, he might be 23, 24. No, he wouldn't be because 23 he was sitting on the bench behind Brett. So, anyway, thank you so much for coming on. Imran, where can they find your stuff? Where can they download this app? App Store. So go to your App Store. Look for Generations Fantasy Football. It's out now. Go to your Play Store. Generations Fantasy Football. Available there. You can find me directly at, at iPervase07 on Instagram, on uh, on X as well. I am on LinkedIn. If you want to look up, look me up. Imran Pervase. Feel free to look me up and add me up there as well. Um, our website, GenerationFantasySports.com. It does need some improvements as well, but you can definitely get in there, jump on the mailing list as well, try to try to get us added so we can definitely talk to you, chat it up a little bit. So we're trying to also gather our mailing list as big as possible for some potential giveaways to so do some other things. We're looking to grow on Patreon and do a couple other stuff. So if you guys can, sign up, play with the app. We have a gameplay tutorial also available on Twitter, on YouTube as well. Forgot, you can check us out at Generations Fantasy Sports on YouTube as well. A um, couple videos there for you to take a look at. Um, and then just talk to us, man. Comment there. Hit me up on LinkedIn. Hit me up on Instagram, on Twitter. Whatever you guys can, talk to me. And we're readily available to be able to so talk. So I'll to take the Joe Namath autograph jersey. Be sure to send Tip the Zach Wilson one. I think I can get like 10 of those for like $10. I, five. You, you pay a buck for each one? Man. I mean, it, you know, you got to at least pay for the wrist movement, you know. <laughs> Give the kid something. He's not Thanks throwing a football. A lot. Okay, so next week we have a very special guest. We have Scott Fish coming on. And Scott is going to break some news about live draft locations. So if you don't know who Scott is, they raised $300,000 for charity last year. 286 k um, That's 300 Oh, yeah, basically. And I think over the life of his uh, charitable work, he's raised over a million dollars for charity. Wow. Scott Fish is one of the giants in the industry in terms of good guys he's just really a good guy and he will be at the expo get yourself to the expo it's at the pro football hall of fame man i mean i i got my first trip to canton ohio for last year's expo and i gotta say i met some really great people there and i'm really looking forward to seeing you three guys 
as well. And JC and Iggy will be there with us too. So I met Wendy early there. And I don't know if you guys know this. Wendy had probably the most popular podcast episode I've ever seen this week with Stefania Bell. They had just under 3,000 live viewers. Just wow. under 3,000 live viewers. So that's simply amazing. So Wendy and I met Carla. Wendy and Carla, I'm going to take credit. I'm tooting my horn. I had them interview Tina Gunter, uh, the commissioner of the oldest women's only fantasy league in fantasy football. I put that league together back in 1994, 96, something like that. There were no women only leagues at the time. I called it the ladies of fantasy football. And when I retired in 2015, Tina took it over. I tried to get the women of fantasy football to interview her. They didn't know who she was. They didn't know who I was, so they just weren't interested. So I asked Wendy and, and Carla to interview her, and they loved doing it so much that they started their own podcast. If you haven't seen Game Changers, right now it's Tuesday nights, but next month it's going to Wednesday nights. you got to see Game Changers. It is, it's not a... It's not going to tell you who to start, who to draft, things like that. But it asks the questions of the movers and shakers of fantasy football. That I, They got Stefania Bell, an on-air talent from ESPN, all right, on their show. They've gotten other people. They've gotten, Mike, uh, they've gotten Scott Fish and Bob Lung, Howard Bender, Bob Harris. Wendy says Bob Harris is her bestie. And then I told her, Bob and I used to talk till 3 in the morning. He might be your bestie, but I've known him a lot longer than you have, <laughs> Wendy. Um, but that's the type of people, Scott Engel, you'll meet these guys at the expo. And I, I'm here to tell you, anybody that's been in this hobby for 10 years or longer facing the public is a good guy. And the reason I say that, or gal, and the reason I say that is because Every industry has good and bad people. The people who take advantage, the people who bend over backwards to help you. In the fantasy space, if you're a bad person, that reputation will get out. And then once you lose credibility, it's gone. So fantasy space clears itself up. The people on the screen are good guys. You go to the expo, you talk to them, they will talk to you. You ask them a question, they'll do what they can to help you. Every single time. And Bob Harris and Scott Engel are two of the best at it. Um, I, I I went into the Hall of Fame in 2010. Uh, the very first class. I went in with Scott Engel and Matthew Berry and Eric Carabell and Greg Ambrosius. And I, to this day, believe I did not belong in that class. I think, I'm, I, think I belonged as a Hall of Famer. But I thought Bob Harris should have been the very first person in. Um, so thank you gentlemen for putting up with me. Thank you for being here live tip. I really appreciate that. And if you want to get in on a beta test at Gregory L. Kellogg, just send me a DM. If we're not, if I'm not following you, I will. All you got to do is let me know, you know, you follow me. I will follow you back right now. I'm, I'm, I'm blocking people because I don't want to talk crypto and I don't want to talk sex. Those two things I just don't want to have anything to do with. But if you ask, if you come in for fantasy, I will answer any question you have. But right now, Tip and Jack are probably better at it than I am because I took five years off, and they're they're a lot more active. And Imran, man, you're game changer. You really are. Yeah. I got to get you on Wendy and and Carla's show or Nick to talk about this application because I think it is changing the fantasy landscape. JC, take us home. 